In our last learning video, we saw how we could produce a procedure which was a mini program away from the main program. So it allowed us to um, organize our programs, our code, um, in a much more effective way. So that if we were wanting to come back to our code um, and make changes, um, we could quickly identify the procedure um, and make the changes there instead of having to look through pages and pages um, of code in our main program. So procedures are brilliant at organizing um, our code into manageable sections. Uh, one thing we didn't look at last time was how procedures can actually um, have values passed into them. So as you can see in this example we've got a procedure for the 10 times table and we've got a procedure for the 5 times table um, and when we run our program both of these procedures are executed one after the other. If we wanted to produce a little menu system saying what times table do you want to run we could have um, options from 1 to 10 and we could have a procedure for each of those times table. Um, but obviously that's not as, e as efficient as it could be. We're duplicating lots and lots of code. It would be much better to have one procedure where we could pass in a value, for example 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10 and um, have um, that function, sorry, that procedure actually show that particular, ten time, um, that particular times table depending on what the user wanted. So we could ask the user for a number, 1 to 10, pass that value into our times table um, procedure and actually um, it will generate the times table for that particular choice. So let's have a look to see how we can actually pass a value into a procedure. Um, and this is actually called parameter passing. So if I was to get rid of this uh, procedure and this procedure and just call it times table, what I could then do is I could say that um, could have number equals int input what times table do you want to see and the user could then type in a number um, from 1 to 10 perhaps um, and that will get stored in number what we can then do is we can pass this value the contents of number into the procedure times table now to do that we put the value inside the brackets of the procedure name. And then what we do is we have another variable which is going to pick up that particular value. Now it could be the same name. So num the value of number will pass into this variable here, okay, which will be local to this procedure. But it doesn't have to be the same name. It could be just um, y, for example. So what we could say is for x in range all the way up to 10, print y multiplied by and then we could have the value that they've chosen Oops. equals y times 10 and this way we've got much much less code the user can actually choose a number and that value that they've chosen will pass into this procedure and be executed. So let's see how that works. So if I was to now run that, what times table do you want to see? Let's say we want to see the 2 times table. 0 multiplied by 2 is 0, 1 times 2 is 2, and so on and so forth. Let's try that for another value. So let's try the 4 times table for example. And you can see how again the 4 that has been entered has been passed into this times table procedure. It gets picked up by the variable that we've put inside the y bracket. Um, so the parameter has been passed in and we are now using y inside this procedure. Okay, so that's called parameter passing. We can pass parameters into our procedures to make our code a lot more efficient. Okay, now a procedure is exactly what we've just seen. A function, however, um, is um, a little bit more advanced. Now, the difference between a procedure and a function is that whereas a procedure will take on values, or not necessarily, um, the actual output is going to stay within that procedure. So we've printed this times table statement um, from within the procedure. 
Now to turn it into a function, basically what a function does is it will return a value back into the main program and that can be incredibly important um, when we're actually programming. So I'm going to show you how that can happen now. So what we can do is we can say, um, we'll, in fact we'll, we'll set it up exactly the same, but the difference is that I want to actually return um, different values. So I'm going to make a slight change here. What I'm going to do is instead of printing out um, the full list of times table, I'm going to have this function return um, a value um, which is just a, a multiplication by 10 for example. Multiply by 10. So what I want to happen is I'm going to say answer equals y multiplied by 10. So this function is going to receive a number chosen by um, the user. So what number So what number do you want to multiply by 10? The number is then put into the um, variable number. It is then passed into the function multiply, oops, multiply by 10. And it's picked up by this um, parameter y. Okay, and then y is multiplied by 10. And answer uh, is actually going to store the answer to to that particular multiplication. Now as I said, a function will return a value back into the main program. So to do this, we simply write down return and we return the actual variable that, or the value of the variable that we want back into the main program. So return answer is going to return it into this main program. And the way that we can get the main program to actually pick up that particular value is just by adding an assignment, um, a variable assignment to the start of that function. So we might want to have um, answer, which will be a global variable in this case, equals multiply by 10 number. So just to very quickly go through this, number gets entered by the user and gets stored into a variable called number. It then gets passed into this function and gets picked up by parameter y. y is then multiplied by 10 and answer receives or um, stores the actual answer to y times 10 and then answer gets returned back into the main program and is picked up here. So now if I was to do print oops, answer, we'll see whether this has worked. So if I just save that and I go and I run this program, what number do you want to multiply by 10? Let's do 30 and the answer is 300. And let's do it once more just to double check. What do I want to multiply by 10? I want to multiply 1000 by 10 and we get 10,000 as our answer. So that has worked perfectly. Now the last thing to say is that actually what you can do is you can pass more than one value into a function and you can also return more than one um, value back out of a function. So let's imagine that instead of multiplying by 10 we just wanted to have a function which multiplies two values. This is what we do. Okay so in our main program we've asked uh, what number do you want to multiply and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that and I'm going to ask them to enter another number. What number do you want to multiply the previous number by? We'll store the second value that they enter in number two and the first one in number one. And here what we're going to do is we are going to have multiply number one Oops. and we'll also pass in number two. So two values here are going to be passed into this multiply function. So to pick up those I'm going to say x and y are the two parameters that are going to pick up number one and number two. And it's really important at this moment to note that um, it picks it up in the same order that it's given. So number one is going to go into x and number two is going to be passed into y. And now what I'm going to do is just say answer equals y times x, or x times y would make more sense, wouldn't it? Okay, not that it makes a difference. So answer equals x times y, and then we can return the answer. 
Now, I wanted to show you that you could also return more than one value. So let's just very quickly add in another variable. So I might write down comment equals your answer is dot dot dot. So instead of just returning answer, I'm going to return comment and answer. So these two values are going to be returned back in. Now because I've only I can only actually have one variable pick up these two com uh, these two um, returned values. Um, this is automatically going to turn from an uh, uh, to, from a variable into a tuple. Okay, now a tuple is just like a list. It's a data type that can hold more than one value. But whereas a list can be changed, you can append to a list, you can um, pop values out of a list, um, a tuple um, is, is constant. Okay, so once a value has gone into a tuple, um, it can't actually be changed. So let's have a look to see how this program actually runs. So if I go to save that, and then I click on run, external run, what number do you want to multiply? Let's multiply 10, and what do we want to multiply the previous number by? Let's say 4. It says your answer is 4t. So that is perfect. Okay, so it's actually taken um, the comment variable and the answer variable from the function, and it's passed it back, uh, returned it back into the main program. It's been picked up by answer, which is a global variable, um, and it's actually a tuple. Okay, so that's then printed. So if I wanted to print those out individually, just to show you, what I could do is I could say print answer square bracket zero and print answer square brackets one. So that's going to return each individual value from that tuple. So let's run that and see if it works. What number do you want to multiply? We'll do 10 again. This time we'll do 5. Your answer is, is the first thing that's been printed out first fat part of uh, the tuple. Answer 1 is 50, okay, they've been printed out separately and then your answer is 50 has been um, printed out, so the whole tuple has been printed out there. So that is an example of how, uh, first of all, you can pass parameters into procedures so that you can actually um, get a procedure doing uh, working a bit more efficiently. And then we've also looked at how you can turn a procedure into a function by having this return statement, okay, returning values back into the main program. That's what a function does.